Hey guys, now you're looking at a map on how to get to the Bastion of Locke, the first dungeon in Terra Online. If you die or just want to get there to run it, then that's how you get there. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering, why am I looking at a map? Hey, why am I looking at you killing mobs? Well, because this is the first of a playthrough video of Terra Online. I'm going to be showing you, with the help of my guild, how to successfully run the dungeons in Terra. Now I'm a Lancer tank and you're going to be getting the tanking point of view. I'll help you out as much as I can with everybody else's point of views where I can. You'll be learning the mechanics, the walkthroughs and where to go. Now this is only the first pull, second pull maybe, but uh, it's fairly simple dungeon. The main things you have to be careful of when you're running through this place is melee cleaves and random range targets just firing at you from a distance. Now I'm going to be running this at 12 times speed until we get up to the first boss. All the trash pulls in this place are fairly simple. It's highly recommended, if not essential, that you kill every single trash mob in this dungeon. Not just because there's a whole heap of quests and dungeons in this game, but because, well, it gets very awkward when you're fighting a boss and the adjacent rooms suddenly start running in to kill you. Uh, I had that experience with my guild the run just before this one actually. So as you can see we're running through all the mobs are fairly easy running up to the first boss having no issues whatsoever and now we're coming into the first boss's room just now. Now the first boss is a little bit different to every other boss in this place mainly because you start off with this mini boss here now we're all just going to get into position. You're going to want people fanning out, your ranged fanning out into the sides of the room and your melees chillaxing in the middle with the boss. Now your starting boss, just do your normal attacks, your basic damaging, pretty much just, just whittle her down. Did a little bit of a miss then, that's kind of awkward. And yeah. Uh, when she dies, a rock boss is going to spawn in the middle of the room. She does have a fair amount of health, but she doesn't really hit for much. So the main thing you're going to have to watch out for is just getting your mana back and whittling her down. Alrighty, now she's about to go down. There we go. Alright, now that she's down, we're going to see the giant rock monster spawn. Here we go. Now, things that you're going to watch out for for the rock monster is his giant stone mace. As you're going to see, it spins around and hits you. It does small damage but very rapidly. The other thing going to need to be careful of is his diving at pretty much any target he can see. Now he does fairly constant knockdowns so if you're not blocking or dodging you're going to be on the ground a lot and that's less than preferable if you're tanking. His main attacks is a heavy smash down with his rock hand and then a, another smash down with like a cleave with his mace and he will do charges. Now the other ability is he'll run into the center of the room. This is easily avoidable but it does a lot of damage. There's going to be a large fire ring spreading out about 10 meters around him. Stay out of that at all costs especially your weaker ranged characters. Now, you just missed it, but there was a circle on the ground just behind me as I charged at him. Now, if you're a tank, you don't want to be in that either, because it's 50-50 if it's going to block or not, depending where you're looking, how you're looking at it. He's going to throw a fireball at you, and it's just going to explode and do some damage. Basically, it's just easier to not be in it, and that goes for everybody. This boss, he has a lot of health, and he's pretty much just an annoying boss. He's uh, fairly straight, as straightforward as it gets. Very basic mechanics. Um, your group's just got to be careful of when he's jumping around like that. He'll pretty much pick a target, you'll get a skull above your head. That means you've got to move, otherwise you're going down. Now the very good things about bosses in Terra is that you're going to notice that the boss has been falling over a lot. It's not because he's walking on slippery ground or anything, it's because characters can knock him down. This is very, very helpful. Now, you can also stun him with a shield bash or whatever, but player abilities are able to be used on bosses. It does have a lower success rate as if you're using it on a normal mob, but nonetheless, it can still be used. And I would think this is a 
very, very handy mechanic to be used in boss fights. So your tank's taking too much damage, stun the boss, knock him down, gives the healer enough time to catch up and whatever. The other thing is, which you're going to see in a little bit in combat, is we're going to res our friendly dead guy. Uh, not quite yet. We're still in the middle of a fairly intense part of the boss fight. But we will get around to doing that. As you can see, the healer's resing him now. So, it's I think it's very good. It does have a cooldown, and anybody can res with a scroll, but yeah, it's a very handy thing to be able to do. So the uh, boss is being knocked up there again. Now, towards the end of the boss fight, he will start doing a large 360 cleave. That's where your healer's really going to have to be on his ball and make sure that that doesn't kill too many people. There we go, a nifty little cutscene for killing that boss. Call a little bit of loot in the corner. So yes, that was the first boss. We're just going to pick up our loot and then continue on our merry way. Now... We're going to keep running. Now one of the things that's going to happen is all the mobs in this main foyer are going to respawn. So, pretty simple. Those AoE fights are fun anyway. Now, as you're going to continue going, there are going to be a room with six large mobs in there. They hit like trucks, but they go down fairly easily. The next few rooms are going to have large imps in there. Just got to kill them with patrolling dogs and masters. The dogs and masters can be annoying, but they are relatively easy to take down. They will do charges and knockdowns as well, like most other things in this game. As you can see, there's actually quite a few of those patrolling mobs. So we're going to go through, we're going to clear out all the adjacent rooms of the boss fight. And it's just going to keep on clearing. This instance pretty simple for the instance map, just kill everything really, that's the philosophy of this place. In a uh, previous run for this final boss, everybody died but two of the DPS, and it's actually rather awkward and quite a long fight while they killed them. But uh, they, they managed to do it, good on them. That was uh, Zaj, and I believe a Pug Sorcerer when we did that. So that was pretty fun. Alright, so you're going to want to put down a campfire, get your stamina back for this fight, because it it can be a lot harder than the first boss fight. So we're all pretty much ready now. We're all stamina up, buffs everything, and we're gonna go in and do it. So pretty much with this boss, the first thing you're gonna want to do is clear out all those little imps in the room because they are quite annoying. I mean, they don't do a lot of damage, but there's something that hits you and you don't want them attacking your tank, attacking your healer, you just you just want them gone. So get all your DPS on them as soon as you can. The boss isn't going to aggro from that, you actually have to physically run up and hit the boss or pull him over using an ability. The boss doesn't really like it when the slayer runs up and hits him and he's going to run off and chase him. Just slightly annoying but it's all good. Taunt, get him back. Now, the main thing this boss is going to do is he is going to jump everywhere. He is part frog, he is part bull. Now, the ideal place to tank him is in the very center. With this one, we had a little bit of issues with him being knocked down pretty much all the time. Mainly, just a small play issue. Didn't, didn't really affect too many things because it made it a little bit harder for range to get out of the way. When you have the boss in the middle, simply have your melee DPS behind the boss DPSing and your healers to the side and your ranged to the other side or behind. You don't want your healers or any range to be in front of the boss because of charges and pretty much all that other stuff. Now. When you have the boss in the middle, he's going to run off to the sides a lot and then jump at the middle, or the person with the highest threat. Now this is easier because when you have the boss in the middle, all your melee DPS have to do is wait for him to jump into the middle and continually DPS him. They just got to stand there and wait for him to come back. There's not much of a point of chasing this boss around in this one 
because he's just slightly faster. So as you can see, he's just going to jump over here. We can start DPSing him again. It's it's not too hard. Now the main attacks this boss is going to do are swipes with an ultimate pound. When his eyes glow red and he goes all crazy, he's just going to slam down on you. The other two things he'll do is run away and shoot a fireball at you. This fireball doesn't do a lot of damage. It's more of a, hey, look at me, I can shoot fire, than a, hey, I'm going to go kill you with a fireball. Simply block it, you're all good. Now, the other one when he do, does is when he walks away is he's going to attack the person with the highest threat. So that's the sorcerer. He's going to run over and jump at them. He will sometimes occasionally aggro reset and attack the healer because they managed to generate quite a bit of aggro in this game. So tanks are really going to have to be on the ball for that. Try to continuously taunt whenever you can and keep your threat up. Now other than the jumping around, this boss is actually fairly simple. He's just very hard to whittle down. When he gets down to 10% health, the altar where we're fighting him at the start of the boss fight and the thing where he actually starts in the room, another mini boss will spawn. He is a ranged caster who will just shoot death balls and all that other stuff at your group. They do not do any damage in comparison to what the actual boss, the giant bull minotaur does. So continue to focus down your boss once your tank or another high health or high defensive stat player in your group catches aggro on him so he does not attack your healer. We sent our slayer to initially push him down until I could get there and take threat on him. It's quite effective. Slayers have very high crowd control and it was quite easily done. Now the boss is just going to run around, does his little charge thing. We'll finish him off before we take him out. Now, as you can see, the caster is standing there. He's not doing anything. We don't even have to look at him. I'm not even bothering to block. Now, once he goes down, if you're on the main storyline quest for this dungeon, then you'll get a nifty cutscene. Otherwise, you're just free to loot. Now, that's the last boss down. There are only two bosses in this dungeon and a lot of trash. You must be level 20 to start it, and you can do it up until level 27, I believe. Until the next dungeon, which is level 27 when you can start it. So uh, we're just going to distribute our loot and that's all. So pretty much Bastion of Locke is fairly simple. Um, it's a good introductory dungeon and I recommend if you can do it, go do it. Hopefully this guide has been helpful to you and you guys liked it. Um, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for any more run-throughs that I'll be doing with my guild. Thank you.